800 years ago existed a man so powerful and so legendary that the world government had to completely erase him from history because just his tale alone is a threat. Even in 1000 chapters and 25 years into One Piece, we still know practically nothing about this man called Joy Boy. Well, except for his ridiculous strength. After Luffy awakened Gear 5, we can finally solve just how strong and godly Joy Boy was and will be. And if you think you know the full capabilities of this man, well trust me, there's a lot more to him that you haven't yet realized because it has to do with things Luffy did in the pre-time skip. Let's just say that Joy Boy might be the fourth ancient weapon that was completely erased from history, and if not this, he's at least on par with the ancient weapon's power, which means he's tears stronger than guys like Roger, Whitebeard, and Kaido. In this video, I'm gonna explain to you in obsessive detail literally everything that Gear 5 Luffy's abilities has done so far, why he's a lot stronger than you think, how Luffy's Devil Fruit has the power of every single Devil Fruit ever, how the Joy Boy from the Void Century used Luffy's fruit and what it has to do with Hanuman, how strong the original Joy Boy was, and lastly, how Luffy and Joy Boy are ancient weapons and how Oda foreshadowed it this whole time. This is the ultimate Luffy Joy Boy video, so I really hope you stay through to the end. And now, without further ado, how strong is Joy Boy really? Well, to start this off, let's first take a look at Joy Boy's physical attributes in his offense. The Gorosei state that awakening the Nika Zone fruit gives Joy Boy's rubbery body greater physical strength and freedom. And you may think, yeah, that sounds about right, but let me prove to you why that's a major understatement. The very first thing we see Luffy do after turning into Gear 5 is grab Kato with his bare hands, pull him out of Onigashima, leap him up into the sky, and then swing him around going face first into the floor. Now just think about what Luffy actually did. He literally picked up a whole entire dragon, and since Kato is roughly around 3000 feet long, which is about 43 times longer than a fin whale, we can only assume that he He's also 43 times heavier, which means he weighs about 3,900,000 pounds. That means that Luffy was swinging around almost 4 million pounds like it was nothing. Forget Pirate King, Luffy instantly became the Bench Press King after awakening the Gumma Gumma no Mi. And I mean, just look at Kaido's face during this, his dumb little scary face when he notices Joy Boy's power. Like you have to be an absolute menace to even make Kaido shat himself. To make this all even crazier, I feel like there's a high chance the Joy Boy from the Void Century was a giant who ate the Gumma Gumma no Mi since the government had to erase a whole century from history, which means that Joy Boy was probably alive for those 100 years. Knowing that giants live three times the span of human lives, I'd expect Joy Boy to be someone who could live as long of a life. And so if Joy Boy was a giant, and since giants are physically the strongest humanoid creatures in One Piece, that means that the Joy Boy may have been physically stronger than even Luffy. I can't even imagine that being possible, but it might just have been the case. Another redonkulous move that Luffy uses on Kaido is using him as a literal jump rope. And since I already went over how much Kaido actually weighs, you can grasp just how insane this is. Like, let's be honest, can Prime Whitebeard even do this? Does Prime Whitebeard have the physical strength to grab Kaido and use him as a jump rope? I personally don't think so, I don't even think he'd even have a shot at it. I don't even think any Elbaf giant could do such a thing, especially mid-battle. This move alone makes Joy Boy by far the physically strongest humanoid being of all time. Like god damn. I mean, the only thing stronger than Joy Boy is Joy Boy on Fishman steroids. Even when Luffy fights Luchi, we see just how much of an impact each hit holds when he knocks out an awakened Luchi in only one Gummo Gummo Don Rocket. The craziest thing about this is that Luffy one shots him while literally laughing, showing that he's just toying with him and having fun. Notice how Luchi acknowledges how much force each of his moves has, showing that it's a power level that he's never seen before. And I mean, Luffy is so strong at this point that even his breath alone could probably knock out someone weak like Charlos. We know this is true since he can fly himself up into the clouds just by blowing. Another thing Luffy can do is turn into a giant in a split second which gives him even greater force and power in his punches. We know Luffy gets ridiculously stronger when he does this since in NS Lobby he states that when the air moves through his bones it picks up power. If this already happened with Gear 3, I can't even imagine how much power he gained when doing it to his entire body. And with this ability, he literally has zero weaknesses since he can adjust to fight any type of being no matter their size. However, the only weakness I would really say Joy Boy has is the fact that he can still get cut since he's rubber and he pretty much always has to dodge sword attacks. He can probably block them with strong enough armament hockey, but still, it 
pretty much is his only weakness. And now that we've looked at his physical strength in his offense, now let's take a look at Joe Boy's most underrated feat, which is his defense. So Luffy gets completely torched by Kaido's blast breath and then just completely rubs it off as if it was nothing. The reason this is so crazy is because Yamato acknowledges that Luffy took the full force of it and she looks extremely worried. And I mean, she should be because that attack would kill or severely burn anyone else in the verse if they took it head on without armament hockey. I mean, check this out. Luffy took another blast breath straight to the head, got burnt like a crisp again, and the next panel we see him, he's perfectly fine and even has a giant fist blown up. Like, it literally seems Kaido's most destructive move does almost nothing to Joy Boy. This alone proves that while in the awakened state, Joy Boy has arguably the best defense stats of all time, only rivaled by guys like Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom. I'd honestly argue that his defense is even stronger than theirs because Joy Boy can't only tank fire, but he can also continuously tank advanced conquerors hockey straight to the face from the supposed strongest creature in the world. Try to keep in mind that these are the same moves that previously killed him and he's now taking them to the head while telling Kaido, isn't this fun? Joy Boy also has the ability to turn anything, well, almost anything, around him into rubber. And with this, it seems like he can quite literally do anything that he imagines. For example, Kaido shoots a fire breath at him and then Luffy casually picks the ground out of the ground to block the blast. And not only that, but it even ends up shooting back at Kaido. This is literally so OP because this means that Joy Boy potentially has the abilities to use anyone's Devil Fruit abilities against themselves. And the reason I say only Devil Fruit abilities is because I don't think he'd be able to do this if someone put hockey into the attack. Like I feel like almost any non-awakened fruit would be useless against him because he seems to be able to both automatically regen from Devil Fruit powers and use his opponent's powers against themselves. Kind of like how Blackbeard yeah. nullifies the abilities of any Devil Fruit, I feel like the Awakening of Nika also does this in its own special way. If you think this is already too much power coming from an Awakening, then wait, because not only can he turn people's own Devil Fruit moves against them, but he can also use their Devil Fruit powers or at least have moves inspired by his enemies. For example, he literally becomes God D buggy for a little when he's able to pop his eyes outside of his body. In this panel, it also looks like he might even be able to remove his head from his body. However, it's hard to tell if his neck is connected to his head or not. Also, let me know in the comments who do you have winning a fight to the death? Chibi Buggy or Chibi Luffy? This would be a battle for the ages. Another god Joy Boy replicates for a second is NL when he grabs a piece of lightning and then chucks it at Kaido. He also starts swinging around a different lightning bolt, treating it like a gymnastics pole, and then uses it to fling off towards Kaido. This really makes me wonder, like, if he could do these things, then couldn't he potentially just grab one of NL's moves and throw it back at him? I know Rubber is practically lightning's weakness, but that still doesn't really add up as to how Luffy can physically grab a piece of lightning. And with this, I also wonder if this works for other Logias like Hizaru. I swear, if Luffy starts catching Kizaru's light beams and throwing them or bouncing them back at the Marines, I'm gonna lose my shit. I mean, even before Luffy awakened, he was using Logia-like abilities like having fire surround his punches during Red Rock. There isn't really any explanation to this as of now, so maybe he's able to do this because of the abilities of the Nika fruit. And I mean, even from the early arcs, Luffy was smart enough to use water when fighting Croc. And who knows, maybe he could one day learn more water moves from his buddy Jinbei. Another Devil Fruit user Luffy tries to become is Tim Play Wapple when he becomes Astro World for a second. He also ages into an old man after using Gear 5, which is something that Bonnie's Fruit does. Another character he seems to have inspired a move by is his best frenemy Bellamy, when he loads up his twisted legs and bounces off of them like a spring. I also wonder if Luffy will ever show us a move inspired by Whitebeard's Gurugura no Mi. Like, I feel like he should be able to turn the entire ground into rubber and then slam it with giant fists, making the rubbery ground shake at an unpredictable rate, ultimately leading to a man-made earthquake and making anyone standing on it lose their balance or fall. I really hope to see something like this happen because it would be a cool reference to Pop's beard. And so now that you see how he's able to creatively use other people's moves within his own, we see just how diverse his moveset really is. This is really good for combat because no matter who he's fighting, they can never guess his next move. And on top of that, he can specifically use 
moves that his opponent is weak against. Now going more deeply into how he seems to be able to turn his surroundings into rubber. This is one of his biggest advantages since the whole battleground is treated like his home turf. No matter where he goes, as long as he turns the ground into rubber, he has the advantage over his opponents. The reason this is such an advantage is because he can use this bolt in a defensive and offensive way. Defensively, Joy Boy can use the rubber ground to help him not take as much damage as he usually would. And offensively, after diving into the ground, he can bounce back up with more speed than if it were a sturdy ground. We also see him use the ground as an illusion when he uses the move Mole Pistol. And the thing that makes this move so effective is the fact that the enemy can't see it coming unless they use Future Sight. This whole turning surroundings into rubber thing is cool and all, but in my opinion, it's not even close to turning actual enemies into rubber. Joy Boy doing this to his enemies must be so trippy for them since they probably have the same inner reaction as Luffy did when he first ate the Gumma Gumma with this, Luffy is able to catch him off guard, even if it's just for a split second. And we know how meaningful split seconds are in One Piece when Luffy literally died because he was caught off guard by the CP0 agent. And oh yeah, speaking of Luffy dying, this is another one of his ridiculous abilities since he has the power to come back from the dead. Remember how I was just talking about how Joy Boy has the power to use a bunch of Devil Fruit abilities? Well, he even has the same power as Brook since he has a second chance at life. It also does seem like he really did die since Kaido thought so, everyone on Onigashima thought so, and even Luffy thought so. I believe that in order to awaken Joy Boy, the user may have to die so then the Drums of Liberation can naturally start playing. But now, going back to turning your opponent into rubber, this also helps out Luffy since since I'd expect him to be able to hit them harder with Advanced Conquerors and Ryo. He's now able to just dig right into them, hitting spots that they've never felt before. And by the way, I also loved when Luffy punched through Kaido's face because it really reminded me of a childhood memory. Watching Hercules punching Hades' face after finally becoming a god just like Luffy. And with everything that Luffy can do now, my favorite new ability from his awakening is his move called Gummo Gummo No. Like and subscribe, where he forces you to like the video and sub to the channel. Make sure you subscribe because I have a huge dragon theory coming out that has to do with the One Piece treasure. And I also think I figured out some crazy things on Shanks. If you subscribed, well, Thank you, it truly means a lot. And so now that I've explained pretty much everything that Luffy Joy Boy can do, I now want to explain how the Joy Boy from the Void Sentry probably fought a bit differently. Before we get into how he fought, let me first state that Joy Boy seems to have one of the strongest wills of all time. The Joy Boy from the past had to have had ridiculous Conqueror's hockey and other hockey abilities since, like I said before, he may have fought in wars for a whole century or at least for multiple decades which means that he probably reached hockey abilities that no other man has reached. Remember, Ray Lee tells us that the real advancement in hockey happens during extreme use in battle, and the stronger the foes you face with this power, the stronger you'll become with it. And so now, if Joy Boy fought countless foes with this power, considering that he probably fought the Gorosei of the time, Emu, and an army of celestial dragons, we could only assume that his hockey was off the charts, only rivaled by guys like Roger. Like holy cow he must have been strong, or should I say holy goat, because this man must have been the greatest of all time, and Luffy himself will also one day achieve these abilities as he too too, will need to defeat the current five elders, admirals, and emu once and for all. I mean, Roger did say that someone is coming who will surpass even him, and by the end, I'd expect Luffy to be stronger than him and everyone who ever lived. Whitebeard also confirmed that Luffy will shoulder centuries of history on his shoulders and will challenge the entire world. As he carries on the will of the ancient kingdom, he himself must have the strongest will of all. Like I mean, if you have the willpower to rise up Boa, then I'm pretty sure you have the willpower to accomplish anything. And now we could only merely speculate what Joy Boy could do with his hockey. So now let's talk about something which we can actually theorize on, which is how he used the Gummo Gummo no Mi. In chapter 1044, the Gorsei state that the Nika Zoan fruit gives the user a body with the properties of rubber which allows him to fight however he wants. They then say that awakening brings his rubbery body greater physical strength and freedom and that it is said that in all the world there is no power more ridiculous. After this we see Luffy say that after awakening his fruit he can finally do everything he ever wanted to do which proves that only awakening allows this. The Joy Boy from the Void Century had these same abilities but probably used them in completely different ways 
always, since another English translation states that in combat, the sun god is only limited by his imagination. Every single person imagines different things and uses their creativity in completely different ways, so we can only assume Joy Boy uses powers much differently from Luffy. I really do think that the main difference from the Joy Boy from 800 years ago and Luffy is that instead of punches, he uses his mace and sword. I mean, now that we know that Luffy is based off of Hanuman, the monkey king in Hindu mythology, after he used the move Bajrain Gun, which is a reference to Hanuman, we can only assume that the maze that Nika held is based off of Hanuman's Gata. I mean, just look at it. Doesn't it literally look just like Nika's maze? And to top all of this off, I feel like the way he used his maze was just like how Goku used his pole. The reason I say this is because Goku and his pole are directly based off of Sun Wukong, and Sun Wukong is directly based off of Hanuman, and of course Luffy is based off of all three of them. Just like how Goku used it to stretch, I could definitely see Joy Boy using Gaara in a very similar way, like I mean, his abilities should allow him to do so. He'd probably turn the mace into rubber, which would ultimately allow it to stretch and change shape being able to do pretty much anything he wants to do. I also wonder how well of a swordsman he was, and if he could stretch out his sword in the same way that some Bleach characters do, like Ichimaru and Renji. Now that we know that the old Joy Boy probably fought in a completely different way from Luffy, it does seem like he has one thing in common besides Gear 5, which is Gear 4. On multiple occasions, Hyogo Order states that Luffy's Gear 4 is exactly like the God of Fire. We later find out that this is true when we see that the people of Wano have a Gear 4 God of Fire Fire Balloon during the Fire Festival. The thing that makes this interesting is the fact that the people of Wano have never met Luffy or heard of him since their country is a closed border. This proves that they worship a god from the past that also went into Gear 4 and I'd really expect it to be Joy Boy. It even seems like the Fire Festival is a festival for this fire god and I feel like these traditions were passed down from the Void Century. Now if Joy Boy did have Gear 4, I wonder if he also had Snake Man and if he used it in the same way as Luffy. Let me know what you guys think about Joy Boy's fire style down in the comments and now let me tell you about his true power from within and how he's basically an ancient weapon so the first reason he's on tier with the ancient weapons is because he had and will have the one piece now why does this matter i mean we don't even know what the one piece is right well, yeah, true, but just because we don't know what it is, doesn't mean Oda hasn't told us what it's capable of doing. In chapter 576, right before his death, the legendary Whitebeard quotes that when someone finds that treasure, the whole world will be turned upside down. Considering that Whitebeard already predicted the great war that is taking place in the story right now, we can only assume that what he said about the One Piece is true. I mean, Roger did tell him specifically what it is, so if any non-Roger crew member were to know what the treasure could do, Due to the world, it'd be Whitebeard. And now you may think, well, couldn't he have just been talking about the Void Century history that you learn about at Laugh Tale? Couldn't that information turn the whole world upside down? Well, no, actually. I mean, think about it. Even if the Void Century info that's at Laugh Tale completely exposes the Celestial Dragons, who's actually gonna believe it? I mean, people don't believe in the City of Gold, and they also definitely wouldn't believe a bunch of pirate hoodlums that are causing chaos throughout the world. Sure, some nations will believe Luffy and Robin, but not the whole world, which is what Whitebeard stated. Now, knowing this, I'd assume that there's something at Laugh Tale that only Joy Boy could use to defeat the Celestial Dragons. I honestly don't want to spend speculate here on what that treasure is and let me know in the comments what you think it could be but whatever it was if joy boy is the only one who's capable of using the one piece then that'd make him by far the most powerful man on the planet and on the level of each ancient weapon. I mean, the ancient weapons are described as being able to destroy the world, which is pretty much what Whitebeard said the One Piece will do. Odin also said that there's a day where the world will be overturned, and I'd expect this day to be the very day that Luffy finds the One Piece. Now, this alone makes Joy Boy on the level of an ancient weapon, arguably even a little more powerful. However, there's something else that makes him so ridiculous to the point where he's probably five times this. Is. So in Roger's flashback, we see the Sea King say that their sovereign will soon be born, and another sovereign in a distant sea will also be born, and soon the day will come where the two sovereigns shall meet again. Roger realized that one of the sovereigns was Poseidon, while the other was Joy Boy. Knowing this, we can assume that both Joy Boy 
and Poseidon are always born or around in the same era, and with this, I'd also assume the other ancient weapons being Pluton and Uranus are also accessed during the same era. Robin even states that with forever reason, long in the past, there existed powers deadly enough to destroy the world. Three ancient weapons bearing the name of gods. Is she hinting that the three ancient weapons only existed back in the day and haven't been awakened since this era began? I mean, think about it, it seems like Poseidon hasn't existed in 800 years, and it also seems like Pluton hasn't been awakened in 800 years. Now, although we don't know what Uranus is, we could only assume it'd be the same for it. Also, what if I told you that this information from Roger's flashback and Robin describing what the ancient weapons are proves to us that there's a fourth ancient weapon that was completely erased from history. Just like how Robin states that three ancient weapons bear the name of gods, this fourth ancient weapon is the exact same. In fact, if we look deeper into it, Poseidon is the Greek god of the sea, Uranus is the Greek god of the sky, and Pluton is the Greek and Roman god of the underworld. So what do these three gods have in common? Well, they're all Greek gods and have Greek names. So if the three ancient weapons have Greek names based off of gods, then I would also assume the fourth ancient weapon to have a Greek name that's based off of a god. This fourth ancient weapon in fact goes by a Greek name and he He's known as Sun God Nika. He is inspired from the deity called Jesus Christ, and we know this to be true since the Greek crosses have the name Nika on them. All these letters in the Greek language read Jesus Christ conquers and Nika by itself means conquers. Isn't this just like how Luffy the Sun God will have to conquer all of his enemies with conquers hockey in order to become Pirate King? Now if you thought this was a stretch, then wait, there's even more on what the name Nika means. Another meaning to the word in the Greek language is the bringer of victory, which is exactly what Luffy is. The Russian meaning is born on Sunday, which is the day of the sun kind of like the sun god Nika, and it's also the day where followers of Jesus worship. The Latin meaning of Nika is belonging to the Lord, and more specifically, the Lord Jesus Christ, since that's who Latin speakers typically worship. The Slavic meaning is belongs to God, and yet again, it's more specifically belonging to their god Jesus. So as you can see, the name for the sun god Nika seems like it could have been inspired from Jesus, while also being inspired by the word Nika in Japanese, which means to laugh or smile. Just like how Jesus rose from the dead in Revelations to defeat the dragon called the Devil or the Beast, Joy Boy also returned in a similar fashion, defeating a dragon called a Beast or a Devil since Kaido's an Oni. Also remember, that the sun god Nika seems to only be awakened every 800 years, just like the ancient weapons Poseidon and Pluton, which may also be a hint to him being an ancient weapon himself, or at least basically an ancient weapon. And remember, Nika is also literally known as being the sun god, just like how the ancient weapons are gods of their own. And now you may be wondering, okay, so if Joy Boy is practically an ancient weapon, well, what's his special power? Like what does he have that has the power to destroy the world? I mean, there's no way his devil fruit abilities and hockey alone are as powerful as something like commanding all the sea kings. Well, just like how Poseidon is a natural force in the world, which is to command the sea kings, I think Joy Boy is also a natural force in the world, which is the force of bringing people together and liberation. With this, Joy Boy will end up being five times stronger than each ancient weapon and the One Piece, since he's the one who brings them all together and befriends them. Think about it, Luffy is the one who saved Fisherman Island, befriended Poseidon, and was even the reason she Shirahoshi awakened Poseidon's abilities. He's also the same dude who's allied with people connected to Pluton, which would be Vivi, Frankie, and Momo, and on top of this, in a way he even saved Pluton since Wano is Pluton. He'll probably do a similar thing with Uranus, and if Uranus has anything to do with the Sky or Skypea, well, Luffy already saved them too. At the end of the day, Luffy will be the one in charge of the One Piece and the three ancient weapons since whatever he does in the final war, the other three will just follow. I believe that Joy Boy is the one who truly has the power to destroy the world since with these five things combined, they should have the power to destroy the whole red line, which is what many people believe will happen at the end, and is what I believe what Oda meant by the power to destroy the world. Also, what if I told you that this power of Joy Boy to bring everyone together was foreshadowed since the pre-time skip? Back in Marineford, Mihawk said that his no skill or technique but the simple ability to turn those around him into his allies. I would call that the most dangerous ability in this entire ocean after he saw countless of people help out Luffy. Notice how he states it's not a skill or technique but a natural ability and 
Isn't this kind of like an ancient weapon? I mean, isn't Shirahoshi's power an ability and not a skill or technique? This very ability of Luffy may be the ability of Joy Boy, and this truly does make him the most dangerous man in the sea, since he can turn anyone, even his enemies, on his side. Luffy is the only one that will bring marines, pirates, slaves, kingdoms, and even revolutionary criminals together. I mean, every arc, it seems like he helps out someone who is supposed to be an enemy, but ends up being an ally when he helps Kobe, Law, Smoker, Buggy, and even Croc. Like, even now, Bonnie isn't really supposed to be the Straw Hat's ally, but she'll probably end up as that since Luffy is slowly befriending her. I mean, if the dude can get Zoro and Sanji to be on the same crew together, then I'm pretty sure he can be the link to anyone being friends. Like, Luffy is literally the definition of that one friend who keeps the group together or who gets the whole group to get along. I mean, Luffy somehow even got the Shandians and Skypeans to make up after 400 years of war, so maybe he and he only could also make pirates and marines make peace after 800 years of war. In my opinion, the most impactful relationship he'll bring together is gonna be the fishmen with the humans, since after 800 years of hardcore racism, this relationship will definitely mean the most. Another power of Joy Boy seems to be what Who's Who and the Five Elders described. Who's Who says that during the Void Century, slaves would pray to a legendary warrior who would one day free them. The Five Elders also confirm that the Sun God Nika is the warrior of liberation, which proves that he naturally frees and liberates people. We've seen this done countless of times, for example, when Luffy liberates the people of Wano from Kaido and Orochi's reign, liberates the people of Dress Rosa from their false happiness and celestial dragon ruler, frees Kokoyasi village from Arlong, freed Alabasta from their made-up war, and of course, when he literally freed prisoners from Impel Down. It almost seems as if freeing the world was always his job due to the fate that he received after eating the Gama Gama no Mi. He also of course won't stop here as he still needs to free the world and the slaves of the world from the Celestial Dragon's empire. And I even think that freeing or liberating the entire world could also be interpreted as one of the powers to flip the world upside down since the current world isn't free or liberated and doing such a thing would be the exact opposite. Another power power that Who's Who brought up was that these slaves also said that Nika would bring smiles to their faces and deliver them from suffering. This perfectly corresponds with another thing the Five Elders said, which is that Nika brings smiles to the faces of the people. This is one of the most ridiculous powers because he literally makes people happy, and with this, he can make anyone his ally or someone that roots for him. I mean, without Luffy being this true self, Robin would have most likely died a very sad death and that would have changed the course of fate in the world since it would have made it very hard for anyone to find the One Piece and to solve the Void Century. Because of Luffy's strong will and positive mentality, he even made Robin say, on top of all of this, not only can Luffy make people smile by making them happy, but one of the most underrated things Nika can do is make people around him laugh. I mean, he's even made the least laughable person of all time laugh, Zoro. <laughs> this trait is so underrated because if he can make his enemies around him laugh, then it automatically makes them somewhat like him and be friendly with him. Like, imagine if you're doing what's supposed to be an intense competitive battle with someone, whether it be a sport, game, or even fight, yet the whole time they're acting hilarious. This would make most people lose their focus except for those with the strongest wills. Luffy's goofy fighting style makes people feel as though he's playing around and then they don't take him very serious even though Luffy's actually trying his hardest to defeat them. Once Luffy gets a bunch of people on his side, this isn't only powerful because of their sheer numbers, but on top of being able to get people to get along, Luffy also gives his allies hope even when there's a 0% chance of winning. A continuous theme in One Piece is for the Straw Hats to simply believe in their captain no matter the circumstances. Over time, we see how they've gained a trust so strong because they've seen him perform little miracles over and over and over again. When Luffy supposedly dies, Kaido even states that the cost of their defeat, or more specifically, Luffy's defeat, is their hope and freedom. He says that he's gonna make everyone and their wives and children a slave until they die. This is a parallel with the world nobles and Joy Boy since Kaido, a literal dragon, is planning on slaving people just like the celestial dragons, while Luffy or Joy Boy is the one who gave them hope and ultimately ended up freeing them. We also see that Luffy was literally named the warrior of hope in Thriller Bark when he was the only hope that the people had to be free from Moria's shadow powers and free to see the sun. Being the embodiment of liberation, Every time someone has wished for freedom, they hope for Nika or Joy Boy. As I already stated, 
a lot of people even hope for him specifically to save them and even Vegapunk says that as long as people hope for Nika, his existence will never truly disappear. Hope ultimately makes people stronger since they have something to believe in which gives them more willpower. My last main reason for Joy Boy being equal to that of an ancient weapon has to do with his observation hockey ability that hasn't yet been explained. In case you forgot, back in Wano, as Luffy was defeated by Kaido and sinking deeper into the sea, he ended up communicating with Momo telepathically. This doesn't really make any sense since, first of all, he's completely knocked out and he shouldn't even be able to communicate at all. I mean, even if he was conscious, this still doesn't make too much sense since guys like Odin, Roger, and Momo hear it but they've never actually used it to communicate back with someone. Even when Shiro Hoshi and Momo speak to the Sea Kings and Zunisha, they do so by using their mouths in real voice and not by using observation hockey or telepathic messaging. To make matters even crazier, not only can Luffy do this telepathy with Momo, but it also seems like he can do it with literally anyone, even Lost Crew, who's never shown any signs of being able to hear the voice of all things or even being strong with hockey, but somehow even they were able to hear Luffy's voice while he was sinking to his death. This ability seems to be the opposite of Ice's ability in Skypiea, since she was born with the ability to hear everyone's voice around her, even without training, while Joy Boy seems to be born with an ability that allows him to communicate telepathically with people. This basically makes him an ancient weapon, since we know that only the Sea Kings and Sunisha can do it, which many believe to be connected to the ancient weapons. Also, as Luffy becomes the greatest warrior of all time, he will most likely use this ability in war while commanding people what to do. Imagine him communicating telepathically while also playing the drums of liberation. Everyone will know when he's coming and the celestial dragons will fear the very sound of the heartbeat. And now that we know that the elders may be based off of celestial bodies in the solar system, let me ask you this. What's the most important and most powerful celestial body that keeps the solar system together? Well, that would be the sun. And that is why the celestial dragons fear the sun god so much. They know that his light can shine the truth on the world and that he's the only one who can defeat them. Also, now that we're getting closer to Elbaf, I really feel like we're going to learn a lot about the original Joy Boy and Sun God in that arc. The reason for that is because it seems like Joy Boy may have connections to the Norse god Odin since Odin was known for wearing a straw hat. Odin's name also translates to Master of Ecstasy or Master of Overwhelming Joy, which is quite literally the same thing as Joy Boy. There's a whole lot more to the Odin Joy Boy connection and if you want my whole theory on it, click on this video right here. I promise it's even better than this video's theory.